The English romantic poet Lord Byron packed more into his 36 years than most people would in two lifetimes. To say that he lived life to the fullest would be a massive understatement. The handsome and gifted Byron enjoyed success, fame, adventure, and wealth, but above all, his was a life of endless scandals. Countless love affairs, sexual experimentation, alleged incest, massive debts, and regular debauchery all figured prominently throughout Byron's life. When the writer of Don Juan died of fever in Greece in 1824, he left a legacy of highly acclaimed poetry and widely publicized scandals. While he's still regarded as one of the finest poets that Britain has ever produced, his tumultuous private life is only rivaled by the likes of the bed-hopping Italian adventurer Casanova. So where did it all begin, and how did Lord Byron come to lead such a wild life dedicated in full to the pursuit of pleasure? He was born in London in 1788, the only child to Catherine Gordon and Captain John Byron. We only have to look at his father's antics to realize that the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Captain Byron himself was a habitual adulterer and very partial to a lavish lifestyle that soon left his wife and her family crippled by massive debts. His father thus fled to France to escape his creditors, where he died in 1791. Young Lord Byron and his mother were forced to relocate in Aberdeen in Scotland, where they lived on a meager income with limited support. On top of that, Byron was born with a club foot, which no doubt left a psychological scar throughout his life. However, when Lord Byron was just 10, he inherited the estates and titles of his great uncle William Byron. He and his mother gleefully packed up their things and headed straight back to England, where they moved into the palatial Newstead Abbey. This was a vast estate that had been given to Byron's great uncle by King Henry VIII. Life was about to change dramatically for the young lord. For starters, he was soon shipped off to private schools, such as the prestigious Harrow, where his eyes were truly open to the wonders and temptations of the world. When he was 15, young Byron met his distant cousin Mary Chaworth and was immediately smitten. Although she was several years older and engaged, Lord Byron was besotted with his cousin, starting a lifelong pattern of pursuing forbidden passions. In 1805, Lord Byron attended Trinity College at Cambridge. It's here that he started to write and rack up debts prolifically. By now, Byron had already developed a huge appetite for any girl or woman who took his fancy. He wasn't limiting himself, though, and it's thought to have also dabbled in a relationship with a male student. John Edelston was a choir boy at the college, and Byron expressed his deep love for him in a series of poems and letters. In 1809, Lord Byron took his seat in the House of Lords, where he made several speeches advocating the rights of the Luddites and other activists. Not long after taking his seat, Byron embarked on a lengthy tour of Southern Europe with a good friend from his Trinity days. This trip had a large influence on him, as he readily identified with Greek and Italian relaxed philosophies on life and their moral tolerance. Byron was captivated by the sunny skies, sparkling seas, and the cultural escape from the stiff old England. He's believed to have struck up a number of liaisons with both women and young men alike during his formative travels, and his European treks were to inspire his breakthrough series of poems, Child Herald's Pilgrimage. Lord Byron traveled as far east as Turkey, where he gained attention by completing the arduous five-kilometer swim across the Dardanelles Strait, linking Europe with Asia. It was an incredible achievement for the time, and it embodied Byron's general spirit for engaging in anything physical to stir the blood. Lord Byron returned to London in 1811, not long before the death of his mother. The next year was to be the turning point in his life. In early 1812, Byron made the first of his impassioned humanitarian speeches supporting the rights of workers who were being displaced by machines. In March, the first two cantos of Child Harold's pilgrimage were published, bringing him instant fame and adoration. Byron was perfectly suited to the spoils and attention that his poetry and political leanings were to bring. He kicked things off by becoming embroiled in an intense affair with Lady Carolyn Lamb. Lady Carolyn was a well-known novelist and an aristocrat, and most importantly, married. Her husband was a high-ranking British politician who would go on to become the Prime Minister. This mattered little to Lord Byron, and their affair became so passionate that Byron's friends had to intervene to prevent them from eloping. The fiery fling was scandalous stuff for the highly moralistic upper-class English society, and news of the cuckold William Lamb soon spread across the country. At just 24, Lord Byron was just getting started. He'd now had a taste of forbidden fruits and very much liked what he saw. He soon moved on to his next love, Lady Oxford. She was another upper-class socialite who was enamored with everything about Byron. His boyish good looks, poetic genius, and liberal political views. His lust for the pleasures of life knew no bounds. Apart from his uncontrollable urges for sexual satisfaction were his lavish tastes. 
Byron feasted on rich foods and alcohol and was forever prone to ballooning out in weight. He slurped his booze from a cup fashioned from a human skull and hosted parties and feasts of huge excess. By the summer of 1813, Byron was like a man possessed. He struck up a relationship with his half-sister, yes, sister, Augusta, who was married to a British colonel. He then began an affair with Lady Frances Webster, as if to distance himself from the outrage concerning his dalliances with Augusta. In what was most likely a bid to redeem himself, Byron decided to marry Anne Isabella Milbank in 1815. She was a well-educated baroness, and together they had a daughter, Augusta. However, the marriage was almost doomed from the start, due to Byron and his wife having almost nothing in common. They shared vastly different worldviews, and to make matters worse, he was still lusting for his half-sister. Coupled with his humiliation was the rumor of his bisexuality, which ultimately led to Anne Byron leaving him to live with her parents. Lord Byron's days were numbered in England. Same-sex relationships were heavily frowned upon, and the number of affairs and broken marriages he'd been a part of were too many to ignore. He decided to get out of England and settle down in Switzerland with Percy Shelley and his wife Mary, the writer of Frankenstein. Mary had a half-sister, Claire Clermont, who had enjoyed a fling with the hot-blooded Byron in England, and they soon got straight back to it in Switzerland. The Shelleys and Claire returned to England in late 1816, but Byron had other ideas. He'd seen the Mediterranean and he wanted more. Claire gave birth to their daughter, Allegra, but by then Lord Byron was living it up in Italy and Greece. He was whining, dining, lazing in the sun, while pouncing on anyone who took his fancy. During these debauched days, he wrote that, Man being reasonable must get drunk. The best of life is but intoxication. The love trysts continued, including an affair with his landlord's wife and a baker's wife, who he referred to as a gentle tigress. These adventures inspired Byron to put pen to paper, and he wrote the much-revered Don Juan, which tells of a bold and womanizing adventure with many obvious self-references. By 1818, Byron was a bloated version of his former self. Years of decadence and promiscuity were starting to show. However, he was a creature of habit and became infatuated with a teenage Italian countess. He accompanied her to Italy, where he learned of the Italian fight for independence. Byron decided to do the same for Greece which had always been a special place for him. In 1823, he went to Greece to help fight for freedom from Turkish rule. This was to be his last adventure, and in 1824, he succumbed to a severe fever, dying on April 19, aged 36. His extraordinary life of scandals, adventures, and literary brilliance was truly unique. While his poetic gifts will always be universally acknowledged, it's, it's perhaps his best continual search for the next illicit thrill that Byron will forever be known for. Perhaps it's best to sum up his life with the choice words of Lady Carolyn Lamb from one of his more famous affairs. Lord Byron, mad, bad, and dangerous to know.